Welcome to Spiritism Explored and Explained, where we take you on a journey of discovery of the other side, the spirit realm, the universe from which you came and shall return. The Affinity of Spirits In Spiritist literature, one of the divine laws is the law of affinity. It is revealed in the Spirits book. The book was codified by Allan Kardec in the 1850s. Allan Kardec didn't write the book. He posed questions to high spirits. He employed multiple mediums throughout Europe to ask the same questions without knowledge of other mediums, and he only used the answer if the medium reported a similar answer as the other medium obtained. Therefore, Allan Kardec codified. One of the main drivers for the happiness of being a spirit in the levels of heaven is that you are with others who share your characteristics. The opposite is true of the lower zone, or umbral as it is called in Portuguese. Hence the good are grouped with the good, loving, calm, and serene, and caring, while the souls who left their earthly bodies behind, but who couldn't leave their earthly traits behind, such as envy, hatred, selfishness, are also associated with their own kind. The law of affinity isn't directly explained in multiple places in Kardec's books. I do not recall a succinct definition in one passage. The passage which illustrates best the benefit of the law of affinity is in the following. It is question 980. The question is, is the sympathetic link which unites spirits of the same order a source of felicity for them? And the answer is, from the spirits, the union of spirits who sympathize in the love of goodness is one of their highest enjoyments, for they have no fear of seeing that union disturbed by selfishness. In worlds altogether spiritual, they form families animated by the same sentiment, and this union constitutes the happiness of those worlds, as in your world, your group th yourselves into categories, and experience pleasure in being thus brought together. The pure and sincere affection felt by elevated spirits, and of which they are of object, is a source of felicity, for there are neither false friends nor hypocrites among them. Alan Kardec also then wrote his impression of what the spirits communicated. This is what he said. Man enjoys the first fruits of this felicity upon the earth when he meets with those with whom he can enter into cordial and noble union. In a life of greater purity than that of earth, this felicity becomes inevitable and unbounded, because their inhabitants meet only with sympathetic souls whose affection will not be chilled by selfishness, for love is life, it is selfishness that kills. He told us that when we are with true friends, their encouraging attitude and love increases your own feelings of contentment and functions as a generator to send your own feelings back to the group, thereby collectively creating a positive feedback loop, elevating the entire collective. Sounds like heaven? It is. This is why Jesus said of the entrance to heaven, Strive to enter through the narrow door, for many, I tell you, will seek to enter and will not be able. He is telling us only those who have left behind their baser emotions and their quest for ill-gotten material wealth shall be allowed. This makes sense because how would the dynamics of a close-knit group change with a selfish, power-hungry addition who thought of the others as sheep waiting to be fleeced? The answer is that the group would quickly dissipate or dissolve into a rancorous mob instead of a force for positive achievement. Therefore, to join the club, enter that narrow door. You have to grow your spiritual sight and discard your quest to dominate and take from others just to satisfy your personal desires. Therefore, if after you discarded your physical body and yearned to live in a comfortable, loving, and warm environment, then you must demonstrate your ability to contribute. The proof of your worth lies in the life you lead. Your life, unbeknownst to you, isn't a series of happenstance and random events, but a carefully laid out plan designed to educate you. To learn more how to ascend spiritually, read my book, How to Live Inner Peace Through Spiritism. I base it on a poem of a short 24 verses from the spirit Andre Louise. It tells us how we should place ourselves in a mental state to achieve inner peace. Inner peace isn't a condition to enjoy for a moment or two on the beach after a few drinks. It is a life quest, a multiple life quest. In the spirit world, thought is action. As a spirit, our mind creates the environment in which we live. Hence, the more control we have over our own thoughts, the more calm, the more reasoning, the more loving we become. All contribute to a true paradise awaiting us when we are scheduled to pass back to the real world, the spirit realm. The poem is essentially a list for advancement and serenity. In each chapter in my book, we'll explore one aspect of attaining that inner peace. I shall attempt to describe the end state of what was envisioned in the specific verse and why this state is vital for your spiritual growth. Inner peace is more than a list of spiritual conquests. It is what should be the result 
of full integration into the spiritist doctrine. Inner peace is the result, the summit of attainment possible in our short earth lives. The climb is worth the effort, and upon reaching the summit, you shall view more mountains to scale and ever-increasing rewards to attain in your quest. God bless.